Wow. Getting those jitters out. Hopefully this video makes it to Ken so he can see all my ridiculous warm-up routine. Well, if you're looking for a great budget monitor that actually packs a punch and gives you the performance that you need for your gameplay, then you're in for a great video today. I have a lot to bring to you, but it's all around this guy sitting to the left of me, and that's the Scepter E275B. And let me tell you, this thing blew my expectations out of the water. Today we're going to jump in. We're going to test out everything from specs, benchmarking. We're going to get into some gameplay and we're going to figure out where this thing really shines and where it doesn't. So let's get into it. So as always, you guys, I want to tell you all about the specs, the performance, the aesthetics, and of course, the features that come along with this monitor. So let's jump right into that here, you guys. This, of course, is a 27-inch 1440p IPS, one millisecond response rate, 300 peak nits of brightness, 165 hertz, 99% sRGB gaming monitor. And if that wasn't enough, you guys, it does feature the MPRT. It does have FreeSync Premium for those of you that are using AMD, which we are gonna test later in the video. And then of course, the aesthetics on this guy. It actually looks really clean on the desk. It's a very slim, but has this curved bubble look on the back. And the stand itself is sleek. It comes out to a Y on the desk, but it's very clean and thin, almost industrial looking. However, it gives you that aggressive gamer look on the back with the RGB panel shaped in kind of an L. And they didn't stop there. They added some big buttons. They gave you the ability to height adjust, to pan, and to tilt this monitor. But as they say, don't judge a book by its cover. And just because on paper, this says it's an amazing monitor, we absolutely want to put that to the test. But before we get into the calibration scores, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the menus and what they're like, how they operate, how easy they are to use. The menus themselves were pretty good. You could do a full calibration in the standard dynamic range. In order to use the MPRT, of course, you have to have the FreeSync Premium off. And something I really want to no, not every monitor offers this, but it gives you basically a full six axis color calibration and the ability to use what's called their dynamic contrast ratio, which changes the white point, the contrast on your monitor as you're playing different content on that screen. But it's not all good to report for HDR. And even though this is only HDR 400, sometimes you may want it on. And when you turn it on, it is going to lock down everything. I'm telling you literally everything besides the FreeSync Premium capability and the overdrive control. And the last bit we'll talk about is that MPRT, Motion Picture Response Time. And that of course introduces that backlight strobe. And there are three settings in case you are interested and it's low, medium, and extreme. But I do have to report that it does turn off the color calibration capability, the tint, and any user-defined settings that you have already pre-calibrated. That being said, we're gonna get into those Spider-X calibration results here. As you saw, I spent some time, a good amount of time, calibrating this monitor and getting used to those settings. But after going through, you can see the results here as I actually go between calibrated and uncalibrated. And the calibrated view is has much more color, it's brighter, the contrast is better, it's not blowing out the detail. And then if we actually go into the Spider-X results here, we're actually at 100% of that sRGB scale, 93% of the NTSC, 97% of the Adobe RGB, and 93% of the DCI-P3. Now that's better than what Scepter actually markets on the box of their products, but there's still a lot more to test. So let's not get too excited. We do have to get into some real world gameplay. But before we do that, I wanna test the motion using Blur Buster. So let's get started on that. So I did things a little bit differently, you guys. I wanted to make this a little bit of a faster segment and show you just the results of that Blur Busters and what settings I'm using. So I took a still shot of each individual benchmark we're just gonna discuss it and I'm gonna put it up there on the screen for you. Now we have a lot of tests to get to here, you guys, but we're gonna be testing low, medium, and high 
on the Pixel Overdrive, and then we're gonna be getting into the MPRT. So let's jump in. With the Pixel Overdrive being off, our first pause, each UFO here has a bit of overdrive, bit of ghosting, which means that it's turning those new pixels on pretty quick, but it's not actually turning the old pixels off extremely fast. Now, pixel overdrive low. It seems like we've cleaned up a little bit, but not a lot. We're still getting the same kind of overshoot and a little bit of ghosting on that top frames per second, 165 hertz. There's this tiny trace line behind the UFO that wasn't present before. Now, punching up that pixel overdrive to medium, uh, because hopefully this is actually gonna solve a lot of the issues we've been having. This can be a big deal if this makes an impact. So let's find out here. The first pause, I won't say it's much better, but there's not as much actual overshoot and ghosting. It's less, it's minimized. It's a small faint line on that 165 Hertz all the way down to the bottom. Actually, that lower frame per second in this medium setting is performing worse than the other two. Okay, so if medium is just okay and off and low are really not that great for higher frames per second, then high must actually be really good. That's at least what I was thinking. And this high is actually overshooting that image, but just by a bit. This first pause shows that. And then your second row, that middle frames per second, actually has two full UFO images. You can see it down on the feet. And then the bottom, just a lot of ghosting. Nothing but ghosting on this because it's overdriving faster than it can actually refresh and turn off that uh, the previous pixel set. But one more pause. I wanted to see if I could get something a little bit better that would give us more confidence in this high setting and to be fair, I didn't. I didn't find anything that was better. So let's jump over to the MPRT, you guys. There's actually not gonna be any strobe to this one because I just did screenshots. But first on that low, a big mess here. I mean, not a whole lot is redeeming about this. Uh, you get a slight bit of overshoot, slight bit of ghosting, but because of those three images meshing together, the color is actually way off. Now, MPRT medium is slightly better. It is bringing out some, some good imagery, but still we're getting that overshoot, we're still getting that ghosting, and it's kind of a mash of colors. Extreme. Actually, it seems like what Extreme has done is, is it's lowered the brightness, which actually allows it to have a more accurate color without artifacting and blowing out all the detail. And in fact, we're only getting an overshoot image here. The only problem I have is it's pretty dull. It doesn't pop in the color as much. So this is one of those unique scenarios where I would probably tell you if you're gaming at 165 hertz, you should probably use the highest pixel overdrive setting because Scepter actually came through on their settings and what they mean. It is better. Already, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump into some real world gameplay, starting with the RTX 3090 and getting into some Warzone here. And first and foremost, I have to tell you that even though this is a FreeSync Premium and we are using the RTX 3090, we are actually getting NVIDIA G-Sync capability here, which is fantastic. If you look in the top right corner, you'll see the variable refresh rate happening real time. Now, I haven't played Call of Duty Warzone in a while, so when I dropped in here, I was actually surprised. It seems like the graphics have been getting better. And with this monitor and all 1440p of its resolution, it actually, on that drop-in, is giving us a very, very good look at the map. It's nice and dark without blowing out the detail. It is on the bit of the darker side, but I do have it calibrated for a dark room. Getting more into the interactions here. This guy comes running up the stairs. I see him, I turn, I take a shot and I pause. And right here we will see a bit of double image happening, a bit of ghosting. I can still make out great detail. The only thing I'm noticing here is that again, the display is a little bit dark. But regardless, I am hitting this guy nonstop. I'm breaking his shield. He finally makes his turn around the corner, saves his own life. And here I am. I jump out the window to go take his buddy out and I pause in the middle of that interaction. What we see is clearly some double imaging going on here. And then if we look closely, there's actually a tiny, 
tiny, tiny bit of screen tear. It's not a lot, it's right in the middle of the screen where it's breaking the two, the top and the bottom apart. But in full speed, I didn't really notice any of that. So last interaction here, you guys, this guy thinks he's pretty slick. He's gonna follow me around as I just pick up my loadout. I turn, bam, I take a shot at this dude as I enter into decon. And he's all super excited and jacked. He thinks he's got the beat on me. I turn, I lock on, and as you can see, as I pause right here, it's crystal clean. It is epic. It is perfect. At 114 frames per second, I am beaming this dude. He's got no chance. And then my teammate comes in just to clean up the kill, make sure he's down, that he can take nobody else out, and we get a nice little team wipe here. That being said, I do want to get in. I want to test out this RX 5700 XT because I think like I've experienced in the past, especially with Scepter, FreeSync Premium is more than likely going to perform better on this particular monitor as far as motion goes than NVIDIA will. So let's jump in here, you guys. We got a little bit of Warzone. This guy, <laughs> I have to tell you, this guy jumped all the way off of Control and he came down to take me out down here at the docks and he just parachutes in and I throw an EMP at him and then I start taking shots at him and I pause in the middle of the air and he's looking right at me and I can only imagine his thought right now is oh yeah I definitely made a mistake doing this but to his credit he almost takes me out however I pause in the middle of that and it's crystal clean you guys I'm not getting a bunch of motion blur I'm not losing detail in the dark areas I'm not losing his character in the midst of the bright sky. I'm getting full detail. I'm able to track down every single movement that he makes. And I think this next one is actually a better testament to the actual capability of the contrast of this monitor. You can see this guy, he's sitting up on the ledge above the docks here. Normally, this would be extremely hard to make out. I've actually been playing a lot of Warzone lately and making out this kind of detail on a character in an area that's so bright is not easy but let's kind of move away from the finer details of contrast and clarity and color let's get into just raw motion here and what i do is i slide in trying to save my teammates here to this guy who's wiping them out and as i'm sliding here I'm actually gonna aim down sights right after I get out of that slide, and I'm making perfect, perfect imagery. The outline is clean. I'm able to see exactly where I'm shooting on this guy as we're both moving actually pretty fast. And I clean up. I clean up in every scenario where the motion is really good. And I think that's a testament to the FreeSync Premium compared to the G-Sync, V-Sync compatibility with this monitor. So with Warzone down, we're gonna jump into a little bit of Apex Legends because I have been playing a little more lately and I know it's a very popular game. But we get in, we jump in here, you guys, and everything's looking really clean. We're getting great contrast, great white point levels, we're getting great shadow detail. And in fact, in this first interaction here, as I'm getting kind of struck by somebody behind me, and I'm actually able to turn around and lock onto this dude and really just take him out. I mean, just beam him headshots all the way. You know, my aim's not the greatest, but this guy's sitting on top of a building here. And as I aim down sights and go to make a shot at him, it's not really giving me great detail on his character. Now my scope isn't really aimed in too far. It's a very near scope. I still can't make out exactly where this guy is at. So much so that I'm kind of just throwing shots out there to see if I can hit him, you know? But fast pace here, this guy hits the zip line. He's trying to flank us, come up from behind us and pull this maneuver, hoping that we don't see. As he's coming down that zip line, I'm able to track him perfectly. I pause right in the middle. You can see, I'm actually, you can see my hit marker. You can see his character. It's definitely outlined and I am making full contact here. That motion holding extremely strong. I mean, I'm beaming him all the way and he comes sliding in frantically. There's definitely some smearing happening. You can see his character here kind of getting muddied in with the background, which means it's gonna be harder for you to track in game. But taking another pause, as the action gets faster paced, the variable refresh rate is not holding as strong and giving as clean of an image. But there are some redeeming qualities here. You may not experience that same result 
when you're just looking at the monitor naturally. So I wanna go over this last interaction here as we're about to win the game. I'm battling this guy around a rock and he's got all his teammates coming at me. They know this is final circle. They know where the last team's standing. Shoots me from behind. I jump, I do a 180, I turn around, I lock onto target, and I'm getting hit markers. I hit this guy. And even though we are getting a fair bit of world motion blur, I'm still able to make contact and make out detail of his character and easily take him out. And then this final one here, you guys. This one's pretty epic. And I know if I show my head, I'm gonna get taken out. So I launch this Phoenix kit, and then I turn around, quick 180, bam, right in the head. This guy is knocked down and we win the game. It's just one of those scenarios where, you know, when I pause and do it frame by frame, I'm not as happy with the result. But in real world, while playing this game, it felt amazing. Well, we have an amazing segment coming up, you guys, and I think this is where this monitor shines and does a great job. We're gonna be testing Elden Ring, playing with a bit of HDR on, and seeing how good it looks. So let's dive in. And what I noticed, I did have to turn up that brightness a bit. I did have to go in and do a bit more calibration because there was a bit of backlight bleed and it kind of blew out and made the picture look a bit hazy. And as you can see, it's just bright enough that I can actually make out more detail than many other monitors that I've tested, especially with HDR on. And I have to tell you, first up, that the color quality on this, the detail that it's picking up, those gold embers coming off the body of this character here is just vivid. It's great, the color is awesome. Now I'll pause for a second and I'll mention one thing. Again, kind of going back to that lighting panel, even though it does give a good contrast and it does give good shadow detail, there's something not quite there. It doesn't pop as much as some others. And part of that is it's not a full array lighting panel. It's just a single zone style lighting panel, meaning that all of the lights have to be on at once. And it's lighting directly from the bottom or the back of the display. While one part of the screen looks really good, the other part of the screen just isn't quite there. But again, this monitor itself is not very expensive. So for the price that it is, that would be my expectation. It's not actually lower than my expectation of a monitor like this. So I kind of go through the next interaction. I'm going faster paced. And I want to point out something here. Like I was actually able to dodge and duck and avoid getting hit in many scenarios because the way that this just felt was smooth. The gameplay itself was very clean. And even though it's a bit dark, I was still just dodging and ducking and dipping and making my shots and landing them. And that to me is actually a pretty tough task. Ask. So we'll wrap up with Elden Ring right now, and I'll give you a little more detail in the upsides and downsides of this monitor, where I think it lands in this category. For story-based games, for RPGs, for things like that, I think HDR should be on. In my opinion, it actually made this screen brighter uh, than when it's off. So I'm, I'll say that and I'll give it a win in that scenario. It doesn't necessarily mean the color's better, but it did perform better in that HDR setting and gave me a really, really good experience. Okay, so now that we've been through all the benchmarking, all the tests, all the gameplay, let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about the downsides and the upsides, you guys. But before we do that, I really, really have to ask you a big, big favor. It, and don't click away yet because you're gonna wanna hear it. I really need you guys to subscribe to the channel. I understand. It's a simple video to watch, you watch it once. He said, okay, that was informative. But I'm telling you right now, we do a ton of videos and there's gonna be many, many, many more to come. So you definitely wanna get subscribed so you can check out new releases for monitors. You can test out all the benchmarking. We talk about console gaming, PC gaming, and all the like. So I won't ask you again, you guys. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed and let's get into those downsides. So downside number one is definitely gonna be the ghosting. The ghosting we saw in the synthetic benchmarks and in real world gameplay. We saw it in the Blurbusters test and then I think we actually saw it most when using the RTX 3090 in Apex Legends. It performed better in other games, but not in Apex and definitely not in the synthetic benchmark. 
And the second, which ties into the first, is that pixel overdrive. When we did the UFO testing and we tested all of those pixel overdrives, the MPRT Extreme was actually the best. I looked for the best frame I could possibly pull out of all those tests, and I never found one that was extremely clean. There was always some ghosting and always some overshoot. So it was a bit of a disappointment. And then the third, which really relates to this last, this story mode based gameplay, this RBG style or any game that is gonna be a bit darker. And it's a fact that, you know, the lighting panel, it's okay. You know, the brightness is good, the contrast is great, but in certain scenarios, it can be a bit challenging to actually give you that full crisp detail. But it does make up for that with a great calibration menu. So that then leads us to the upside. First and foremost, the upsides on this are color accuracy. I wasn't getting over saturation. We saw in the Spider-X actual calibration, we got 100% sRGB, and that's fantastic. That is better than quite a few monitors out on the market, especially at the price that, that this is. And then number two, when I did plug in that RX 5700 XT, the motion was on point. So if you're using AMD, it almost negates all of those downsides that I had previously. Anything AMD with that FreeSync capability and anything Scepter from my experience, they mesh. They just have this agreement, this bond between the two that brings out the best in each other. And then last but not least, I have to say, this is the best part about this monitor. It's the fact that it's only 299 bucks, which actually makes it almost less expensive than a really good 1080p monitor. And it performs almost exactly like a really good 1080p monitor with a better pixel density. Scepter did a great job with that. They found a target, a price, where everybody could afford to play at 1440p and get a great experience. And when you pair that with the specs they give you, the 1440p, the 165 hertz, the one millisecond response rate, that 100% sRGB, the 300 peak nits of brightness, it all comes together to just have me tell you and recommend that if you're looking for a good budget 1440p monitor that you can use in a wide variety of scenarios, then this actually is one that I would recommend in that budget category. So that's my recommendation. That's where I would leave it. This was a good experience. In fact, I will be doing another follow-up video all about console gaming. If you haven't yet, go check out the homepage. That's where all our playlists are laid out for you guys. 1080p, 1440p, 4K monitors, my recommendations for console gaming, all of that is gonna be there on that home page. And as we wrap up here, I'm gonna put a little, I think it's gonna be right over here. Um, I'm gonna put a playlist up there for you guys to click onto and see all the other 1440p monitors that I've reviewed. So as always, you guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I will absolutely catch you on the next one.